recording. All right, so what we're looking at now is actually assembling the Pentec paperwork. So we're at the house, we did our measurements. Um, we have the color selection. We've gotten a yes from the homeowner. And what we're going to do now is actually assemble the paperwork um, to you know the state of a work order where it can be turned into installation and be submitted for basically delivery to the client. So we're starting at square one here. I'm gonna share my screen so we can look at this. Um, like I said, from a very beginning standpoint and show you how to walk through this paperwork. So I'm sharing my screen now. And <clears throat> um, what we're doing is pulling up the firewall. So you would make a, a blank firewall. So basically, if you have your templates, these are all my templates, I label them, mark them with a red so I know not to use that. So what I'm going to do is long press and hold until this menu comes up, duplicate. And then we'll have a rename here. So this will be test, I'll just call it 2022. So that would be your client name, obviously, where you would put uh, uh, the name of the client, probably best to do first and last, just so you don't have any duplicates that you run into. <clears throat> so first and last name where I have test 2022, press enter. And then what I do is basically I untag it so I hit tags and then uncheck the red and now it's just a normal document. So it won't show up because if you see at the very top of my screen where it says red and has a little red circle, that's filtering it by that criteria. So I go to recents over here on the left, right under the green numbers to the far left upper hand corner. I hit recents and then that shows up right there. So then I just simply click on my document and this first, you see all these tabs up top here these should all look familiar at this point in training. We got our consultation form. We got the payment options where we show the three options, the low interest, no interest, and cash. Video is if you know we have any kind of high degree of difficulty, complexity in terms of access. That's where this video is going to go. We have our pricing tab, which is where we assemble all of the pricing. Uh, paint, which is if we're painting the garage interior. We have our work order right here. And then we have just some ancillary information tabs, such as our referral list, uh, revision history for all the firewall. So anytime we make a revision, we come in here and notate that so we know which uh, document version we're working with. And then here's a change order tab in, in the event you need to do a positive or negative change order. <laughs> so we're gonna start at the beginning here and look at pricing where we measure the garage. So this is where you use a laser measure and then couldn't be any easier. We're just putting in width and length for all the areas in the garage, the back patio, whatever it may happen to be. We just enter simple width and height, width and length measurements. Okay, it's that simple. Um, here, next boxes are two car verticals or three car verticals. And if it's a multiple areas with verticals then we select both. But you can see when I check those boxes and they turn green, that price below the 318 and the 34, uh, excuse me, 437 are being added to my running total, which is down here in this box right there, the 12055. Okay, so that's where you select your verticals. Um, vertical size, you want to notate what mix of verticals you have. So if I have some six inch and then I have some 12 inch, I'm going to select that. <laughs> <clears throat> over 12 inch, I'll select this. If it's a custom color, I simply select the custom color box. If it's an Enviro flake, which are those select group of colors that have more of the uh, uh, kind of landscape blend to it, um, then we select the Enviro flake box, Enviro flake box, and it adds that adder to my total over here. Okay, going around pool, that's for just the degree of difficulty and capturing the flakes so they don't get in the water the best we can. It's a lot of labor and extra materials, so we would select that around the pool. Basketball striping is something we don't do very often, but if we were doing um, some masking, 
then we need to, again, for labor and materials, we need to select basketball striping. Right here is total linear feet of crack repair. So on all surfaces that you're measuring, if you have 150 feet of crack larger than a credit card, you simply put in 150 and look what happens down in this box. We have $795 that's populating to my total line over here, the 12,759. Um, moisture block, uh, extra grinding per square foot is 250. So here, usually most things that we need to do that are gonna be adders would fall into one of two categories. It's either gonna be 250 a square foot or 150 a square foot. And that's all going to be, you know, sometimes I can answer that. Sometimes we need to go to the project manager, Chris, um, or even sometimes to further, you know, Pentec resources that we have at the actual Pentec uh, corporate office. So all you do here is simply put in the square feet that are going to require that area. If it's the entire square feet, this is always your entire square footage right here. So if we're having to do extra labor on the whole thing, I'm gonna put in 1166 square feet right there, okay? If it's the lower of the two, meaning we don't need as much prep or as much extra labor, then it would go in this box. Whoops, 1166, okay? So it's just as simple as that. Um, if you are measuring, obviously, every time we go out to the home, we want to try to measure multiple areas, right? The more areas we can measure, um, you always need to advise this, not from being a pushy, sleazy salesperson, but from giving the client, you know, all the information they need to make a, you know, a, an educated decision. We price based on square foot. So right now I have 1166 square feet at 969 per square foot. If I take off the square feet, it goes up to 1022 per square foot right here. So that's why we always wanna measure all areas that they may potentially do. And we can always easily deselect certain areas if they decide to omit those areas. But we always want to inform them that we do volume pricing and we give significant discounts on labor and materials for the larger the, larger the square footage, the lower price per square foot. So we always want to position that with the client to make sure they're aware, they're informed, and they can make you know the best decision possible. How this would come into effect is if we take this area out, for instance, the 750 square feet, the job total is 5627 at 1022 per square foot. If we add it in, it goes down to 969 per square foot. So their value per square foot on 1166 square feet is you know quite a substantial savings that's almost a dollar you know per square foot that they're saving so in essence they're saving almost eleven hundred dollars um just shy of that because it was 1022 i think so not quite a buck but pretty close to it they're saving a pretty significant amount of money by doing the total volume package at one time as opposed to saying okay let's do these areas and we're going to come back and do that 750 square feet later. So that's how we want to position that to the client. Again, not from a pushy, sleazy standpoint, but from a, you know, here's all your information on the table. Now you make the best decision for yourself, your home, your money, your budget, whatever, Mr. And Mrs. Homeowner. So that's how that works. Um, so that's how we use this firewall. Once we have that all priced, this, and we select this box down here. Uh, right under the 12759. When we select that, that tells this sheet to push the information to our payment options tab. And you see the 12759 right there. From here, we can navigate this um, firewall by showing you know, our discounts here. They're already preset, so you need to pretty much leave them alone until you, know, uh, you get better versed with the financing costs. But right now, the way this is set at 5% discount, 5% discount, and 23% discount, that is correct. So you will not misprice the job if you use these formulas that are in there currently. So you can see with each option, the savings here is 638. Saving here is 638. 
the savings with the cash is 29.35. So of course that's the best value proposition in terms of lowest cost possible on the project if they can afford the cash investment. If not, we have some phenomenal options in both of these, low interest and no interest. On Pentec, it's a little different. Our default is five year 299 with a payment of only 218, as you can see right here. Our no interest is 24 months, 0% with a payment of 505. Obviously you have a five year and a 24 months. So you would expect these two payments to be about half or double depending on how you look at it. Obviously the shorter term is gonna give you the higher payment by about double, right? So that's how we use this pricing sheet. This is how we present the three options as you've learned in the methodology. That's how we present the three options to the client. And then they simply are able to choose which one is most appealing to them. The important thing here is we present all three options equally. So we are equally excited about the low interest, the no interest, and the cash. Because we don't want to formulate their decision negatively um, by putting all this emphasis on the low interest option being the greatest option. And then, you know, they want to go cash. So we diminish the savings of the cash. That's a little easier. What's more potentially a, a threat or a problem where we could derail a sale is if we get super excited about the cash and the 2935 savings. But guess what? They can't afford that 4912 investment. And then we, you know, almost set us up you know, where they're afraid to say, eh, I need my, I need financing. I don't have the cash. So we can potentially for the wrong type of person, it would sway them to not do anything because the cash option looks so attractive. And now they don't want to backtrack to the savings or hurt their pride by saying, I can't afford to pay cash for this. Uh, so, you know, we could potentially walk ourselves out of a sale by making one option look better or more attractive or more desirable than the others, um, you know, which would again, sway their decision. So we've got to make sure that all three of these are presented equally. We don't show favoritism or, you know, um, any preference. All three options are the best option and it's simply up to them as far as which one they choose. And we want to do that again to protect kind of their ability to make a sound decision based on what they need, not based on what we're most excited about. Okay, so that's how we use the payment options. Once we do that, we come over to our Pentec work order, and this is all really basic. So this is just simply, all you're doing is typing in here, uh, you know, address, city and state. Uh, we do need phone number. Super important, we need an email, whatever. Um, generally don't need secondary, secondary email or phone unless they say, hey, try this one first. If that doesn't work, catch me on this cell phone. Then we need to put that in here in a secondary phone. Secondary email would be like if a husband and wife both want this, then we put that in there. Then we put two emails. Um, lead times, this is important, especially in this crazy environment we're in right now. We need to, right now, fortunately, Pentec is one of the more stable lead times. So here, all we have to do is select what is ever applicable based on the information I give the team every Monday. So that's what we do there. And here is where we type in by area. So if we have a garage and we have a, let's say a front porch, we have a back porch, we have a walkway, and um, we need to list those areas separately with the colors. Generally, you know, I, I wouldn't say that, I'd say 50-50. So sometimes they all do the same, sometimes they wanna mix it up. So whatever the color is, we need to be very specific, uh, very clear, so we're delivering properly on their expectations, what the color is, okay? Next thing we do is square feet. So this won't all add up to 1166, but you get the point. They all should add up to 1166, 
okay? So that is a good way to check is that this, 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 and this need to add up to your total square feet, which in this case is 1166. I'm not gonna do the math to separate it all out, but your math needs to match. And then what we do here is I just go down, especially when I'm dealing with multiple areas because I don't wanna miss something or get ahead of myself. I just go down every category all the way across each area and fill out the cells. That's a, probably a best practice to help with errors and omission and that kind of thing. So verticals, we're gonna say yes to all the verticals. Okay, and then I'm just going down the line. Steps, yes, we got steps here, we got steps there. Uh, we have steps here and we don't have steps here. So see what I'm doing here is literally just kind of left to right, just like you'd read a book and working my way down all the lines. Okay, but that's a, a good way to do it so you don't miss something. So here we'll do no pitting, no pitting, no pitting, and no pitting. Condition, so on and so forth. So you do that for all of these cells. If you only have one area or maybe two areas, which is common, um, then all you have to do is highlight this entire section and delete it. So you just delete it this way. And that way, the installation team knows clearly that we're only doing two areas. There's no confusion or possible question as far as, well, these things are filled in, are they not filled in, whatever. So then obviously you wouldn't have anything up here as well. So that's how we do that. Um, we need this initial, this yellow, anything that's in yellow needs to be signed or initial. So we need this initialed, we need this box initialed by the client. And then we would check yes or no with our Apple Pencil. We put in our total, which we get from our payment options. That always has to match. So assume we did cash. 4912, excuse me, 9825 is my project price. So I'm going to take that and put in 9825 right here. It separates the deposit out for you so you know exactly what deposit they need to pay. It's always 50%. We can make exceptions, but that's something that has to be approved and that we need to talk about before it actually happens. Then we select credit card, finance. And if we do a finance job, then we have a selector here for service, Green Sky, or Interbank. I need to add Credit Human to this since we're recently partnering with them. The finance uh, plan number, which will be in your financing folder in Goodreader for your reference. And then if it's cash or check, we need a check number right here. So you just type that in right after the number sign. Um, from there, if we were doing paint, then of course we would check this section that pulls up an initial box right here. And then we have to fill in this in very good detail as far as what's happening. Colors, walls, are we not doing it? Are we doing it? All that needs to be filled out entirely based on what we're scoping, okay? Then basically we sign in this box with our Apple Pencil again, which is gonna be hard to do with the screen 90 degree angle. That's brutal, but you get the point. Um, <laughs> it's terrible. Um, it's easier obviously when you can set this down flat and write on it like you would a piece of paper. So we sign it, we have the client sign here, initial here after we check yes, no, or whatever the case. Turn my pencil back on. And then they need to initial here. So it's really two initials and one signature um, that, uh, that we need to collect from them. So that's pretty much it as far as the paperwork. Like I said, it's, it's the easiest of any of our paperwork. It only gets more complex as we get into windows and siding. But this is how we complete the work order. And then we have another video uh, in our training library that shows you what to do from here as far as getting this into a format that can be used by uh, installation and be transferred to them via uh, email and uh, getting, you know, getting this into Market Shark as well. That's all covered in a separate video uh, that is in our training library. So I hope that helps. Um, look forward to uh, this, uh, this process and, and getting you educated on the paperwork. And uh, as always, we'll talk through any questions as, as they arise. Thanks so much.